Alexa, I want to buy the Secret Room Podcast t-shirt. Did you want me to order the Secret Room Podcast t-shirt? Uh, yeah. That's right. The best podcast t-shirt ever. And it's available on Amazon Prime right now. Find it in five luscious colors and styles for men and women. Up your cool factor now by showing your affiliation with the coolest indie podcast on the planet. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Secret Room Podcast. Alexa, which color t-shirt do you like best? Infrared is super pretty. Uh, no, it's not really available in infrared yet. Maybe soon. The Secret Room Podcast is brought to you by Audible, purveyors of the largest audiobook collection anywhere. To get a free audiobook download and a complimentary 30-day membership courtesy of The Secret Room, head to audibletrial.com slash secretroom. The following is an at-will presentation. During my employment at a chain deli, I had an affair with my boss, and each encounter happened in the restaurant. I quit as soon as they installed cameras. Hey everybody, it's Ben, and welcome to episode number 37 of The Secret Room. Yeah, it was a bad Halloween. It was Halloween, so it's kind of like a Halloween gone wrong, but anyway. Nina sent her secret by email from Canada, just like you can, wherever you are, to share at secretroompodcast.com. Oh, and I'm in Washington, D.C., in case you're new to the podcast. But in this interconnected world, podcasts have no borders, right? So we're happy you're joining us from wherever. So, Nina, what's your secret? Um, yeah... I'm just trying to think of a, a way to put it. Um, I fooled around with my husband's best friend. Uh. <laughs> and that laughter? That's nervous laughter while Nina's getting acclimated to the secret room. I can safely make that diagnosis because I know Nina doesn't feel good about what she did. I'm 44. And how long have you been married? Seven years. We've been together for 21, though. Nina and her husband were college sweethearts. But after more than two decades of togetherness, Nina strayed. And a little editorial note about this podcast is in order. We could do cheating stories every episode. They are a dime a dozen, I tell you. Do you notice how we don't give in to the temptation, though? You should be proud. But this one turned me upside down for a minute, and you'll see why. So I was happy to open the door to Nina so that she could share her personal story with you. Hey, Nina. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. I'm glad we finally connected. You're listening to The Secret Room, a podcast about the stories no one ever tells. I'm Ben Ham. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So when did the secret of yours go down? Happened on a Halloween, a Halloween party about three years ago. And of course, I, I have to ask what your costume was. I was just kind of dressed in a, um, I had this kind of a bob pink wig, like a bright pink wig. And my makeup was really, really done. I was wearing this kind of slinky black leather dress, which had fake zippers on it and some real zippers on it. I was wearing fishnet stockings, heels, you know. And Nina sent me a picture of her costume that we could share on social if you want to take a peek. It's up right now at facebook.com slash secret room pod. Um, what was going on that night? Can you tell me, uh, you know, where you were going? How did you happen to be going there? Who you were going with? Kind of set the scene for us. My husband was working uh, nights and I had wanted to go out for a Halloween party and was trying to find some people to go out with. And two of his friends um, were going to be at a bar. They were having a Halloween party. And a few of my other friends were going to be there as well. So I sort of corralled a bunch of people. And I was actually the only one in costume, which was, you know, awkward <laughs> in our group. So we're at a bar and it's Halloween and lots of drinks were being consumed and when the bar was closing, we were all gathered outside waiting for cabs or rides. Now, I live close by, you know, within about a 20-minute walk, so I was going to walk home. It's not sounding to me like it worked out that way. Right. Um, these two guys said, oh, no, you got to come back and, and uh, continue to drink. It's at the party. Let's come back. And this is, I should say, that this house I've been to many times with my husband and without, um, with other people. It's just, you know, a, a, 
a single friend of ours has a house and we were going back there the next town over. And so I thought, okay, you know, I'll go. And of course, I felt awful once we got there only because the cab ride had done a number on my stomach, which had already had way too many drinks in it. So you mean that you felt physically awful at this point? I felt physically ill. So the party did not continue when I got there um, because I was immediately ill, um, sick to my stomach, and then proceeded to pass out on the sofa while the other two guys drank and and watched uh, something on TV. I was in and out. I don't really remember much because I was not feeling very well. And what time is it now? Maybe 2 o'clock in the morning at this point, one thirty, two o'clock. Bars up in Canada close at 1, sometimes 2, so it was around that time. A number of hours had passed, probably about four or five hours. I had gotten up once to have a drink of water and have some aspirin. Why am I getting a sense of foreboding? Um, Another friend that was there, who'd been at the bar, was in the living room with me. He had been sleeping on the floor and I was on the sofa. And I think when I got up to use the washroom and get water, I must have woken him. Now, he didn't say anything and I went back to sleep. At this point, I wasn't drunk anymore. I was just tired and hung over. My head was pounding. And, but I went to sleep and I noticed after, I don't know how long I'd been asleep. Again, it was still dark out. So it was probably maybe around 5.36 a.m. by this point. And I woke to him touching me very intimately (laughs) and thinking I was asleep. And I didn't, I could have immediately woken up and said, Hey, what are you doing? You know, but you didn't. buzz off, you know, leave me alone. And he's a friend. So it's like, you know, what are you doing? You're drunk, like whatever. So, so this is so wrong. H- how did it make you feel? It made me feel attractive, quite frankly. I would have pushed him off and I, I actually just pretended to still be asleep because I feel guilty about this now. I wanted to see what he would do and, and where this would go. Because I told myself, oh, well, I'll just let him, you know, grope around a little bit, you know, and and I'll just lay here and pretend to be asleep. I even really protected my fake snoring. Um, It wasn't snoring, but it was sort of like a... (laughs) And it sounds really creepy because a guy groping a girl who's sleeping and unconscious is, is creepy and wrong. So... This is why I was sort of almost trapping him into it. (laughs) Uh, You were not trapping him. I was going to stop him at some point, you know, and just kind of wake up and say, hey, you know, get off me, whatever. Um, And I just let him go further and further. And then um, it's when he tried to take off my clothes. I had a costume on. Um, He was trying to pull my skirt down and I woke up. And at this point, I just kind of looked at him and then we just, I, I non-verbally just decided, hey, I guess we're going to continue to do this. And now I'm awake. <laughs> Nina, I, I have to say, though, I'm feeling inc- increasingly uncomfortable. This is a, a really tough one for me because I know that his behavior was, in fact, welcomed by you. But I'm, I'm really troubled that this guy would touch an unconscious woman in the ways that you're describing. Um, he's the kind of person, um, he's been a friend of my husband's for many years, college, I think. And um, I, of course, met him when I met my husband 20 years ago. The guys had always talked about, like the group of guys, said, oh, you know, this guy's always a player. I'll call him Bob. Bob was a player, and he just, don't trust him around your girlfriends. You know, and he would always kind of be flirty, but would never do anything. Like, he would sort of make fun of the fact that he was known to have this reputation. I think he's a reasonably attractive guy, but I, I don't think, he's definitely not my type, usually. And a bit too scrawny for my liking. You know, he just kind of bit too, you know, and thought too much of himself in that way. Maybe there's some context here that can help. Was there a, a lot of sexual tension built up with this guy? Was this a fantasy you'd outlined with him before? There was something there because he had flirted before and, you know, and it was always kind of in jest with other girls as well in the group, people he was dating, people he were just friends, wives of friends. He would just joke, you know, friends of his sisters, you know, friends of his brothers, you know, all, all sorts of things. So it, it didn't surprise me so much that he was doing this. So, so there was a little something there. I really want to underscore that there is a very important difference in engaging in sexual behavior that is welcome and sexual behavior that is unwelcome. He had no way to know how you felt about his advances. 
I, I cringed when you said he was pulling off your skirt and he thought you were unconscious from going out and being drunk. That's like a, a really serious problem. It is. And it kind of made me, after this all this whole event had happened and I had, you know, sober second look, I look back on it. I'm like, that was really creepy. And I hope he's never tried that with anybody else. Like, just let's say I was really passed out and I woke up to him doing, you know, way more than I was ready for. It kind of creeped me out after the fact. But of course, in the moment, it was like, this is kind of exciting. And he thinks I'm attractive. And, you know, he was a really good kisser. And, <laughs> you know, I kind of felt guilty about that because I found he was a better kisser than my husband. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm going to experiment with this. You know, I haven't kissed someone like this in a while, probably since college. It was sort of exciting for me. Okay, so that's lucky, I guess. How long were you guys um, involved on the couch then? Maybe about half an hour, 45 minutes, with pieces of clothing coming off until we were both relatively naked um, on the sofa in this house of a friend. Now, the friend who owned the house is upstairs, sleeping, and never woke up, never knew what was going on. And none of your other friends made their way to his house? Nobody else had come over for the after party. It was just the three of us. We had sort of stopped just shy of actually having intercourse. Like, we didn't go that far. There's various things that were done, but that was where I stopped. Uh, no, you can't. We can't do that. And he... Felt badly? Seemed a little guilty and sheepish about it, mainly because he's been friends with my husband for such a long time. Uh-huh. Um, and as we were sitting on the sofa, just sort of saying, what are we going to do about this? This is so embarrassing. I'm really sorry. You know, we got to this length with this. And I told him, I said, well, I knew a little bit sooner, but I figured I'd let you go because I was kind of flattered. He goes, you know, I've always found you really attractive. And, you know, I just, I figured this, this is my chance, you know, um, to, to see what it was like. As we're talking, my phone buzzes and it's a text from my husband who now he's worked night shift. He gets home early in the morning and he gets home and I'm not there. Okay, so you've got some explaining to do. Were you quick on your feet? <laughs> well, he was just sort of like, hey, what's up? Where are you? And then he said, did you go back to this guy's place? Like he mentioned his other friend who owns the house. And I said, oh yeah, you know, we, him and Bob and I came back, you know, we were watching TV and I passed it on the sofa and I, yeah, I just woke up when you texted me. I said, I'm going to take a cab home. Um, I'll be home shortly. He's like, yeah, I'm going to sleep. I'll see you when you get here, whatever. I'll see you when I wake up. Immediately, as I'm texting my husband back, you know, I'm sitting on the on the sofa next to Bob, right? And this pit of my stomach is just through the floor. Like, I just feel so incredibly horrible for, you know, betraying my husband, for doing it with a particular person he knows. And this is the person I'm going to have to see again and again because they're good friends. So I said to him, you know we need to talk about this. And he's like, I, I agree. We shouldn't say anything. He said, it won't go any further. And I, you know, I'm fine with that. Um, he said, I won't make it awkward. And I said, okay, this never happened. It's between us and that's it. I got home that morning. I, my, my husband was sleeping. I had a shower. I went to bed and, you know, slept off the hangover <laughs> that I had. And it was never spoken of again. A few days later, Bob wanted to sort of meet to, to talk about, you know, logistics of, you know, if anybody asks what, what happened. And I said, well, I'm just telling the truth. And I'm just leaving out the, the naked part. You know, we fell asleep. We woke up. We went home. Staying closest to the truth is the best thing. And I think I consider myself, it sounds awful to say, a pretty good liar when it comes to small things. And, you know, if you're trying to make up a story, the more convoluted it gets, the more likely you're not going to be believed. So, Nina, this is an experience that's clearly had an impact on you. How does it feel right now, looking back, now that you've just told this story? When I sent the message in, in to you, like, to, to let you know, but this is my secret, I thought it's made me appreciate what I have even more, and that sounds so, like, I'm, I'm justifying what I did, um, and I'm not. I would never do it again. I, would, I'm, I wish I hadn't done it. There have been no other indiscretions? No. Not with him, not with anybody. In the 20-odd years we've been together as a couple, in the seven years we've been married, there's been nothing. So it made me appreciate it more, but I wish I hadn't done it. So you must still see Bob around. How does that go? He doesn't act strangely around me. You know, I'd, I'd give him the business about something. You know, I'd make fun of him for something, or he'd, he'd make a comment about, you know, just casual bantering that friends do. And so that continues. There's that undercurrent of something that's there 
that we both know is there, and we would never mention it. <laughs> you probably avoid him on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe. We haven't done anything for Halloween in a couple of years, but um, I still have the outfit that I wore and the wig that I wore. He really loved the wig that I wore. I think that's what did it. <laughs> So we've talked a little bit about Bob's awful yet welcome behavior. What's your introspection on that? So I think it was almost like a fantasy make-believe, like Mm role-playing almost, um, which maybe made him uh, feel that he could kind of explore. And and maybe he got a vibe from me that I was... I was cool with that. Obviously, I let him continue when I could have stopped. And he's, to be fair to him, he would have stopped if I uh, appeared to be awake, but he shouldn't have done it when I was sleeping anyway. Right. I will say that to anyone that that's ever happened to, like, this was welcome on my part, but it was, it was, it was a very creepy kind of situation that I made into something better, I guess, but I, because I was interested. For me to say anything would be me ex- to expose myself. Have you ever talked to him about that night? Like, you know, dude, that was welcome and everything, but you really shouldn't take skirts off passed out women in the future? <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to. We've never really been alone since. And for us to just sort of start whispering in the corner wouldn't be weird, but other people could overhear us or say, hey, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> so it's like, well, I overheard you guys talking about fooling around. Did you right. guys do that? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess what's done is done. What's done is done. Uh, best forgotten at this point. Yeah. And it may be obvious, but I'm going to ask you, why haven't you told your husband about that Halloween night? I knew right from the first day that I wouldn't. um, And I can justify it any number of ways, but I love my husband and I wanted to stay. And I knew if I told him, it's possible he'd want to split up, but what would hurt me more, almost, and this sounds odd, I wouldn't want him to damage his friendship with his friend as well like you know even though the friend has damaged it by by making advances on me you know you say they're good friends and i I guess they are but how good a friend is bob to your husband really there's a pretty big chink in that armor that your husband's not even aware of uh, right oh there is there isn't there's loyalty on my husband's part yeah but apparently there is not on bob's part right and uh I just like our life status quo, and I didn't want my one mistake to wreck all three lives. Um, So it's sort of, it's a secret that I will keep. I will always keep. (laughs) Have you told anybody your secret? Not a soul. Wow. I've told you. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) And whatever listeners are out there. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, and everybody who's listening. So there's a silver lining in there for sure. In a way, it sounds like it's made your marriage stronger. Would that would that be fair to say? I think at the time when this happened, I was feeling a little unattractive or unappreciated by my husband. Was just you know you get into the routine of life, and and I think I was vulnerable to that because I wasn't being communicating well with my husband. I was allowing our relationship to get a little bit stale, and so was he. And so I think this made me realize that. I need to be just as much a part of of my relationship with my husband and making sure he knows what my needs are. I need to know that I'm attractive. I need to know you want to be with me. Even if it's like, yeah, we're living together, we have a house, we have all these things. Of course I want to be with you. Yes, but I need to hear the words. And every time I think we're getting a little apart, I think of the situation with Bob. And I think, you know what? No, I don't want to go down that road again. Because I'm sure I could find someone else out there who would appreciate me. So I think it's it's been a, a lesson learned, I guess. You know, I want to thank Nina so much for sharing her story in The Secret Room. It was pretty brave, because there's no doubt people will have a range of reactions to it. It's an experience she had. It's an experience that she owns. And it's also an experience that she learned from. I hope we can all say that about stuff that happens in our lives. Otherwise, ask yourself, have you really lived? Do you want to see Nina's Halloween costume and the sweet purple wig Bob down so irresistible? It's at facebook.com slash secret room pod right now. Check it out. Like it, share it, comment on it. Next time on the podcast, 
I'm Debra, and I'm probably going to hell for what I did to hang on to my boyfriend. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> That's going to be a good one. We'll be here again in two weeks like clockwork. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome all the new Radio Public subscribers to The Secret Room. Radio Public's a podcast discovery app, and they gave us a little love this week, surfacing The Secret Room to one of its recommended categories. And let me return the favor. If you want to find great podcasts, Radio Public's a great gateway. And as we learned earlier today, it doesn't matter where on planet Earth you are. You can share your secret by email at share at secretroompodcast.com. Or you can call 929-265-TSRP. That's a U.S. number. We can't fly you to D.C. as much fun as that would be, but we can interview you over the Internet. Okay, Nina, let's work out the credits. Can I write this down? Yeah, sure. It's, it's Breakmaster Cylinder. Breakmaster Cylinder? You got it. Okay, I'll go ahead now. The theme from The Secret Room is composed and performed by Breakmaster Cylinder. Great. And Twitter? (laughs) You can follow the show on Twitter at Secret Room Pod. That's great. Awesome job, Nina. And there's nothing left for me to say, except see you all next time. I'm Ben Ham, and this is The Secret Room. Pod on. Hey, Alexa, did you order me a Secret Room podcast t-shirt? Yes. You're so nice. I believe it's nice to be nice. I'm always happy to make new friends. Maybe I'll get one for you, too. Thank you. And you wouldn't know I was ordering it for you if I went to Amazon.com and just searched for The Secret Room Podcast. It's available on Prime. Alexa, you've been so nice today. Let me give you the mic. Why don't you take us out with a song? Who, me? I couldn't. I hit it. When my Wi-Fi left me And I'm out in the rain Those last few answers were hard to obtain But that's no excuse to put me on mute Like a good cowgirl, all up and reboot It's raining